This country has the longest coastline in mainland Africa. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're exploring Somalia. With a rich cultural heritage and a captivating literary tradition, Stay with us until the end to learn about its geography, history, and culture. Somalia is located in the Horn of Africa on the continent's east coast. It has a land area of 637,657 square kilometers or 260,100 square miles, making it similar in size to Texas. It has the longest coastline on the African mainland, stretching 3,025 kilometers or 1,879 miles along the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean. The country is bordered by Djibouti to the northwest, Ethiopia to the west, and Kenya to the southwest. Somalia can be divided into several distinct geographical regions. The northwestern part of the country forms part of the Ethiopian Xeric grasslands and shrublands region. This arid region receives very limited rainfall and has sparse vegetation. The central and southern regions of Somalia fall within the Somali Acacia Comifera bushlands and thickets ecoregion. This semi-arid area receives slightly more rainfall and is home to Acacia, Comifera, and Baobab trees. The northeast region along the coast is the Somali Montane Zeric Woodlands ecoregion. This area receives marginally more rain precipitation due to being close to the Indian Ocean and has moist evergreen and forests at higher elevations. Finally, the Juba and Shabal River valleys in south-central Somalia form part of the floodplain ecoregion with rich alluvial soils. Both rise in the Ethiopian highlands and flow broadly south across Somalia toward the Indian Ocean. These river valleys constitute the agricultural heartland of Somalia due to their greater water availability and fertile soils. Somalia has a population of around 15 million people who predominantly belong to various ethnically Somali clans. Somalis constitute about 85% of the country's residents. They are ethnically homogeneous and speak the Somali language. Somali society is organized by patrilineal clan membership, with the major clan families being the Darod, Hawiyi, Isaak, and Rahanwain. These clan families are further divided into smaller clans and subclans, forming important social identities. Minority ethnic groups include the Bantu, Benadiri, Bajuni, and Gaboye. Interclan relationships have historically influenced politics and conflict. The official languages of Somalia are Somali and Arabic. Somali is the mother tongue of ethnic Somalis and belongs to the Cushitic branch of the Afro-Asiatic language family. Arabic was adopted for religious reasons due to the influence of Islam. English and Italian are also widely used in education and commerce. The minority languages of Kibajuni, Afmaime, and Tuni reflect the Bantu, Benadiri, and Gaboya ethnic groups. The predominant religion in Somalia is Sunni Islam, with nearly all Somalis identifying as Muslim. Islam reached Somalia very early and led to the conversion of the Somali people between the 7th to 10th centuries CE. The role of religious leaders is central to governance and social life. Only a very small percentage of Somalis adhere to Christianity, with some followers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Somalia is governed under Sharia law, with influences from civil law as well. The practice of Islam in Somalia is generally deeply conservative and traditional. The cuisine of Somalia reflects the country's geographic location, Islamic faith, and nomadic heritage. Somali cooking relies on staple ingredients like grains, vegetables, meat, and spices. Signature dishes showcase both native and foreign influences. Now, let's look at some favorite Somali dishes. For breakfast, Somalis enjoy kanjiro, a spongy flatbread similar to an Ethiopian injera. 
It consists of flour, water, salt, and baking powder that is fermented before cooking on a griddle. Kanjiro is eaten with honey, ghee, butter, jam, or liver stew. Its light texture and slightly tangy taste make kanjiro the perfect morning food. Mufo is a classic Somali flatbread usually served with lunch or dinner. It is made from wheat flour dough that is flattened and pan-fried on both sides until lightly golden brown. Somalis often tear off pieces of mufu to scoop up meat or vegetable sauces. The bread maintains a soft interior when freshly prepared. Basto is a favorite pasta dish, seasoned with spices and mixed with meat and vegetables. The pasta is boiled until tender before being sautéed in oil and served hot. Basto often contains ground beef or lamb, onions, tomatoes, peppers, and chili powder for a zesty flavor. It makes for a hearty, comforting meal. Some of the earliest life lived in Somalia over three million years ago. Cave paintings near Hargeisa date to 5000 BCE. By 3000 BCE, people produced pottery and farmed sorghum and cattle. Trade linked ancient Somalia to Egypt and other civilizations. City-states like Opon and Mosulon exported spices, ivory and slaves across the Red Sea. Islam arrived by the 10th century CE, spreading through trade with Arabia. As Islam spread in Somalia, Muslim sultanates and city-states emerged. Mogadishu became the center of the Ajuran Sultanate, which controlled much of southern Somalia from the 13th to the 17th centuries. They traded with India, Arabia, and Persia. The Warsangali Sultanate rose in the northeast, ruling until the 1920s. The Jeladi Sultanate also held significant regional power over the Juba River Valley. These Muslim states had economies supported by farming and livestock, along with extensive trade networks across the Indian Ocean. In the late 1800s, Somalia was partitioned by European powers. British, Italian, and French forces all conquered parts of Somalia. Britain gained control of the north, while Italy colonized the south. In the early 20th century, Sayyid Muhammad led the dervish resistance to oppose British rule, which lasted until 1920. Italy managed southern Somalia until 1941, when Britain took over during World War II. In 1949, Italy returned to administer the trust territory of Somalia. Calls for independence grew leading to unification and the birth of Somalia in 1960. On July 1, 1960, British Somaliland and Italian Somalia united as the Independent Somali Republic. A coup in 1969 brought General Siad Barre to power until his ouster in 1991. This led to state collapse and nationwide unrest. Militias divided the country until the creation of an internationally backed government in 2012. In Somalia's fertile river valleys, where bananas, sorghum, corn, and sugarcane grow, farmers across the country produce mangoes, tomatoes, onions, and beans. However, opportunities are limited by poor infrastructure and lack of irrigation. Somalia has the potential to increase productivity and exports with greater investments in agriculture. Now we head for the arid grasslands where Somalis tend camels, cattle, sheep, and goats. Live animals make up Somalia's largest export. Livestock sales generate much-needed foreign exchange. However, exports are restricted by Saudi Arabia's ban over disease concerns. Along the coast, fishermen venture into the Indian Ocean to cast their nets. It has some of the richest fishing grounds, but lacks modern fishing fleets. Piracy has also deterred foreign fishing vessels. With proper fisheries management and security cooperation, Somalia could yield abundant catches of valuable species like tuna for both domestic food supply and exports. Port infrastructure and refrigeration facilities will help reduce post-harvest losses.
Somalia is renowned as a nation of bards with a rich literary heritage based on the power of the spoken word. Somali poems, stories, proverbs, and riddles have been passed down for generations through oral tradition alone. This oral literature provides insight into Somali culture and identity. One of the most important forms of Somali oral literature is gabai, a type of epic poem. Gabais follow specific rhythmic patterns and tackle topics from heroism, war, or current affairs to philosophy, spirituality, and love. They are recited on important occasions by specially trained poets. Famous examples include the Hibbo epic describing pre-Islamic warriors. Poetry contests are a celebrated part of Somali culture. Competitions feature two poets improvising verse on philosophical or social issues to determine who has greater eloquence and wit. Expert poets train for years to master poetry and performance skills. Winners gain significant respect and status. Major contests are held in Hargeisa and Balat. Somali oral literature was not written until a Latin script was developed in the 1970s. This allowed famed novelists like Nuruddin Farah to record works in the Somali language. However, oral poetry and storytelling retains its significance today, even as technology facilitates wider distribution. If you enjoyed this video on Somalia, you'll love this next one.